I'm Hannah Johnson, a student at Lone Star College, and I'm here to talk to you today about is too much regulation choking our business? Imagine that you own a construction company in the state of New York. You are responsible for many employees' safety and well-being. One day, one of your employees is injured in an incident due to the fact that he was under the influence of alcohol. According to the scaffold law, only existing in the state of New York, you and your company would be entirely responsible financially for the accident. The Rockefeller Institute for Government at the University of Albany conducted a study that calculated a $785 million increase in lawsuit costs to the state of New York thanks to this law. Governmental regulations such as labor, environmental, and safety laws pose as one of the major challenges in business and organizations in the world today. First, I will discuss the impact of safety laws on business. Then I will address other issues such as environmental and labor laws. Safety laws such as the scaffold law I discussed can be detrimental to big business. Looking back at the article, New York's archaic laws waste taxpayer dollars, the authors described the law as disastrous. In fact, according to a recent study at Cornell University, the rate of injuries in work-related accidents has actually increased in view of the new law. Laws such as this can put unnecessary expenditures on the organizations. While the general safety of the citizens of this country is the responsibility of the government, businesses should have more autonomy on designing unique safety programs that keep their employees safe but don't cause them to go bankrupt. While the scaffold law is still in debate whether or not it should be repealed, a controversial act pertaining to people who work from home was revoked back in 2000. The Occupational Safety and Health Act required that all safety and health standards apply to employees that work from their homes. In the article, Red-Faced Red OSHA Drops Rules from Home Workers, Dan Danner remarks that this was just one of the examples of how far overboard OSHA frequently goes. OSHA decided that this act was unfair because it should not apply to work at homers who were not in dangerous environments. Therefore, the government should not prescribe a one-size-fits-all solution for companies to follow. Another area of government regulation that can be strenuous on business is environmental regulations. Small businesses are disproportionately affected by these environmental regulations. The article Small Business Seeks Significant Relief claims that environmental regulations were most often named by companies as the most onerous. For example, Spectrum Chemical Manufacturing of California had to provide a detailed list of more than 20,000 products to his local fire department, even though most of these products were non-hazardous and only found in small quantities. Many companies blame Congress for writing prescriptive, overly specific laws. The government is overreaching in their environmental laws on companies. Not only does the government place challenges on businesses through safety and environmental laws, but labor laws as well. Labor laws are very challenging for businesses to continually monitor and maintain compliance. The Family Medical Leave Act is a law that requires employers to provide their employees with protected leave for medical, military, and family reasons. Many provisions and some aspects of the law require business to update their definition of spouses due to the recent Supreme Court ruling on gay marriage. Also, the co concept of who is considered a military member has recently changed because of the addition of many new branches of service. This is a challenge because laws change so frequently that it is difficult for businesses to keep up with the constantly changing legal landscape. Government overregulation can also be an impediment to people transferring from welfare to employment. William Dennis Jr. discusses this in an article explaining that sometimes welfare regulations provide a negative incentive for people to find jobs. Many times people do not want to find full-time jobs on account of losing their welfare status. This hurts not only businesses but also the individuals who could benefit by lifting themselves from poverty into full-time employment. Um, I'd like to take this time to recap the points I've made on government overregulation. I discussed the impact of safety laws on um, organizations and how they can be detrimental to big business. I then showed how impactful environmental regulations can be on unreasonable to corporations. I also explained the immense effect of the ever-changing labor laws enforced on business and how difficult they can be to maintain. 
So before you think about starting your own business, consider how challenging it will be to stay on top of the increasingly complex, complex government regulations that are strangling businesses. However, if my speech discouraged you from business, maybe consider going to law school instead, considering how many legal issues will arise from the compl complicated business environment of today. Thank you.